Eight-year-old Skylar Kelly is hoping for a career in the major leagues and enjoys the privileges of being big brother to four-year-old Luke. It is not how life started for Skylar. I can totally see, you know, sitting on the hospital bed and, you know, a, a days of um, a long labor and um, someone saying like, oh, you know, what a sweet little girl. At a remarkably early age, Skyler, who lives in Seattle, began to let his parents know that what he looked like on the outside, a girl, is not how he felt on the inside. When people tried to brush my hair, I would try to push the brush away, and I'd cry and scream, and it was hard in the mornings to even get ready. Did you also have a fight over clothing, what to wear, what kind of clothes to wear? Well. I was pretty much allowed to wear what I wanted, except on school pictures. I had to wear a dress, and I hated it. So did you ever smile in those school pictures, or? I smiled, but. But inside? I didn't, like, I didn't not like it inside. The why of Skylar's gender identity isn't fully understood. The long-held and now controversial medical view links being transgender to a mental disorder or emotional distress. However, new science is emerging, pointing to a complex set of factors. If Jazz said, I'm a boy, then that would be in the top category. If Jazz At the University of Washington, psychology professor Christina Olson investigates the origins of being transgender. Your biology determines a lot of your psychology, and I think that's kind of where um, the, the feeling is right now, that there are probably biological contributors that make a, a big contribution towards our sense of gender identity, which is, you know, psychologically how we feel. Are we male or female or something else, something in between, neither? Ma'am, how are you doing today? How are you? Good to see you. Endocrinologist so, Joshua Safer uh, at Boston yes. University treats hundreds of adult transgender yeah. patients and is a leader in the field. He firmly yeah. believes gender identity yeah. is hardwired in all of us. In most people, uh, chromosomes, uh, body parts, gender identity align. So somebody with male chromosomes, somebody with male body parts is going to have male gender identity. That is the usual circumstance. Uh, all of these are independently controlled biologically and therefore it is no surprise that in a given subset of the population one part is not aligned. That whatever genes are controlling that uh, happen to be different for that individual and that's what's happening with, the, with, with, our, with transgender individuals. Dr. Safer conducted the most extensive review to date of existing studies tying gender identity to biological factors. The most persuasive evidence he found was in experiments done over the past half century on people born with the male XY chromosomes, but with the rare condition of ambiguous genitalia. Soon after birth, they were surgically given female genitalia and then raised as girls. These kids were dressed in, in pink and given dresses and dolls and, and given estrogen when they hit puberty so that they had appropriate breast development and such. And so the, so we were, we're talking about a pretty extreme um, approach that if any approach was going to work, it should have worked. But what happened instead is the majority of these kids, if you query, say that they have male gender identity despite that very, very extreme uh, program. The conclusion, according to Dr. Safer, is that gender identity cannot be manipulated or taught. A second set of data he reviewed involved the anatomy of the brain. Post-mortem testing of women and males at birth who transitioned to females found certain regions to be strikingly similar, though Dr. Safer says more research is needed to determine if those regions are linked to gender identity. At this lab at the University of Washington in Seattle, a unique long-term study is underway of transgender children, children as young as three years of age. With the support of their families, they have transitioned from the gender of their birth to what's called their expressed gender. My turn. Skylar's turn. Skylar, along with several dozen other kids, both oh, transgender oh, 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 and not, went through a battery of tests in the first phase of the study to pinpoint how they see themselves. Okay. All ready to go? Yes. Ready, go. This very quick picture and word association called IAT, 
or implicit association test is intended to take a true measure of the strength of a child's identity. If there is a kid who at birth the doctor said this kid is a girl, but later came to identify as a boy, and that kid is you know, living as a boy today, that kid will uh, show the same results on the IAT as any other boy and looks nothing like, uh, say, his sister or another random girl that we just pulled off the street. Dr. Olson leads the study team. So this suggests that, you know, this isn't just a thing a kid is saying or pretending to be. This doesn't seem to be, um, you know, a kid being playful or being ornery. <laughs> this is really, truly how the child seems to identify themselves at this age. Dr. Olson's research cuts to the core of the dilemma parents of transgender children face. How to know if this is real. I guess my, my concerns as it evolved and we were not at the stage of, you know, him being an affirmed male, mm -hmm. uh, my concerns are, are we jumping the gun? And then you're, it just wasn't comfortable with that whole thing. Many people struggle with the same thing and believe transgender children are just going through a phase. Dr. Olson says in two years of following the same group of youngsters, none has reverted to their gender at birth. Still, she encounters deep skepticism. We see a lot of people saying things like, you know, my child thought that they were a dinosaur when they were four, but I didn't, you know, let them live as a dinosaur, and they didn't really think they were a dinosaur. These are kids who are saying, this is who I am, I am a girl or I am a boy. The Kellys came to certainty one night when Skylar was about six, and there was no denying what their child was trying to tell them. I remember, God, this one awful night, I can still picture us upstairs, and Skylar was just having like a meltdown over nothing. I mean, but just a heartbreaking mm -hmm. meltdown. Like the kind, you can tell the difference between a tantrum and uh, I am just so emotionally unhappy. And Josh and I both just finally saying, like, what is it? Is there something that you're not telling us? And, he, and I said, do, do you want to whisper it to us? And he whispered and said, I want to start wearing boys' underwear. And that is when Skylar transitioned, entering first grade as the person he knew himself to be. And then what do you say? Dr. Olson now has about 100 transgender children in the study, and she hopes to follow them into adolescence and adulthood, and that by learning more, the too common trajectory of a transgender person's life can be changed. We all look at the news and we see those terrible statistics about what life is like for transgender adults. 41% of transgender adults attempt suicide. They have extremely high rates of unemployment and uh, discrimination, violence. And I, what I want to know is how do we change that? Is there a decision that could be made in a child's life and instead put them on a path that's more like the other kids that they, they go to school with and are in their families where you know, they have just as good a chance as anyone else. Of all these words, which words would you choose to describe yourself? Happy, angry, proud, sad, which words? Happy, proud. Happy, proud? Why happy, proud? Because I'm happy now that I get to live how I want and I'm proud, well, I'm proud because my parents understood it, and they're, they're great. He's super well-adjusted, very happy. He's braver than I've ever felt, um, and I hope that he can keep that and that the world doesn't break him of that. The Kellys say the emerging science of gender identity is less important to them than their child finding acceptance and support. They know it may not be an easy life for Skylar, but it will be an authentic one. For the News Hour, this is Jackie Judd in Seattle.